Hello everybody and welcome to another socket tutorial video. Uh, this video is going to be kind of building on the last video that we were uh, covering and that was a port scanner. And actually I want to show you guys the combination of socket and the threading module, which we've already covered the threading module. Um, show you another uh, example of threading in action. So uh, if you don't remember, uh, this was our threading uh, tutorial here. And the actual job that was being run was actually just time.sleep 0.5. So it was just an operation of sleep. Um, but as you can see, this is very simple. We have a function that's example job, period. Um, so in theory, we should be able to just throw our port scanner right into example job, and that would be it, right? So uh, let me move that aside now. And uh, we're going to go ahead. I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll rewrite most of this just so we can go over everything one more time and really rehash uh, what we've got going on. So <clears throat> obviously we're going to import socket. We're also going to import threading, and then we're going to say from Q uh, import Q, and then I don't really think we need to import time for any reason. So we're not going to import uh, time like we did before. And now we're ready to go. Um, we're going to use a print lock again. So we'll say print lock equals threading dot capital lock, and then we're going to say our target equals again uh, python programming net and now we're ready to get started so just like before uh, we need our port scanner so I'm gonna define port scan uh, and then the parameters will have port um, then uh, we're gonna say s equals socket dot socket and then parentheses here socket <clears throat> dot af underscore inet and then socket dot sock stream. So again, nothing new so far with sockets. We've already covered uh, what that line means. And now we want to engage in a try and accept uh, like we had before. And so we're going to say try con for connection equals s dot connect. And then we want to connect to target comma port in a nice little uh, tuple here. And so we're going to try to do that. And then if that gets successful, we're going to run this with statement. And we're going to say with print lock, uh, print port, uh, port is open. OK? So we do that. Um, and then once we're done with that, we're going to say con.close. And because we want to close that connection once we're finally done. Um, and then accept and then pass. So if it doesn't work, we're just going to pass. We're not going to print out like, oh, this is uh, not open or whatever, because then we're just wasting our print statements with this print lock. So that's it for our, our port scanner. Um, it should look almost identical to the port scanner that we built in the previous video. Um, so now uh, we're going to define our threader. Uh, which really is going to be an exact copy of the previous threader that we had before. So that's going to be while true, and it'll be worker equals q dot get, and then port scan worker. So not totally identical, I suppose, because this was like uh, example job. Um, port scan worker, and then finally q dot task underscore done. Um, just as a rehash, this is going to get the worker from the queue. This is going to run the example job with the worker passing through as the port number. So when we, we specify a range of numbers as workers, um, so we can also specify them as ports, why not? And then when we're all done, we say queue.task done to uh, empty out our queue. Awesome. So then we'll come down here and we had better define queue. So queue equals queue -E empty parms. And now we're ready to uh, create our workers, so to speak, or how many threads are we going to run? So for now, uh, we're going to say uh, we're going to have, we'll say we'll have 30, 30 different workers. So for x in range uh, 30, so we've got 30 workers, uh, we're going to say t equals threading dot thread, target equals, oops, threader. So what's happening here, threading.thread, so we're creating a thread, and then our target for that thread is threader, which does this, gets 
uh, workers from the queue, so we're using queue and threading, and uh, we'll set them to work on port scanning, uh, which is here, which we've written. Again, um, all this stuff was covered in its own right so far. We're just combining those two things. So we do we did already cover a specific threading tutorial, and we've already covered the port scanner. Um, so sorry if we're moving too fast. If we are, check out the previous videos. Uh, next, t dot daemon uh, daemon equals true uh, because we want it to be a daemon, so it will die when the main thread dies. And t dot start, which has to be called after uh, daemon. Now. Um, we don't really need to be logging like we did before, so we're not going to use the logging time. Um, now we're going to assign the amount of jobs. And so you can think of the amount of jobs as in the amount of ports, right? So we'll say for worker in range. And this time, instead of just 30 or 100 or whatever, we need to specify a starting point, which will be 1. And then we'll say 1 to 100 and 1. So we'll test the first 100 ports. And the reason why we're doing, we have to say one, is because port zero is an invalid port. We can't scan port zero. So, anyway, moving on. Um, for worker in range one to 100, basically. I don't know why it worked so finicky like that, but basically it means it will scan port one up to 101, so it really means port one to 100. Anyway, moving along, q.put worker. So we're putting that worker to work, okay? And then what we want to do is uh, q.join so that we'll wait until the thread terminates. And that really should be it. So um, hopefully if you walked through the threading tutorial with me, you can see how we've basically written the same uh, script as we did with our initial threading tutorial where uh, the job was just to sleep. We basically replaced that with port scan. And that's about it. So we've just kind of meshed those together. So. That's kind of why I wanted to organize the threading tutorial in the way that I did because you just replace the function pretty much with whatever you need to replace it with. Um, so yeah. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and save, the, save and run this, see if I uh, made any errors here or if it worked out for us. Uh, save and run. It's been popping up here. Yep. S cock stream. So let's fix that. Bound to make some errors. Let's try again. And immediately we see port 22 is open. Does anybody remember how long it took to get port 22 to show that it was open? It took a very long time. Um, so that was actually very quick um, compared to before we actually showed port 22 and port 80 uh, well in advance. Probably we wouldn't even seen it with our original port scanner yet. So anyway, that was very quick. Um, then we could continue. We could say, hey, we want to do 10,000 jobs and we want to have 100 threads, let's say. Um, so we can save and run that, and you can see 22 and 80 were open. We, we knew about their, their being open immediately, and we're going to continue running through ports. Um, I'd venture to guess there are probably a few more ports that are open. Um, how far did we go, 10,000? Maybe some in the 9,000s will be open. Um, not, not quite sure, really. I'm not sure what number we're on even right now. Um, but we'll see. Anyway, so now we're actually, you know, we're using 100 threads to port scan. So as you can see, we can we could use this to our advantage, uh, threading, and be port scanning, you know, a lot of ports at, at any one time as compared to the really slow port scan before. Um, but anyway, um, if this pops happens to pop up with some more ports, great. Otherwise, I'm going to start concluding this video. Um, so that's it with this video. In the next video, uh, we're going to be moving away from port scanning. I just wanted to show you some people. Uh, Port scanning is kind of a, a pretty popular topic, and it involves sockets. It's very basic, so it's really easy to show. Plus, I could mesh it with sockets and threading, so I made a really great example for threading. So um, just wanted to cover those things. Uh, the next ones that we'll be talking about uh, will be back to more networking purposes, sending and receiving data using you know encoding and decoding that data so it works properly. So stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this, uh, feel free to leave them below. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time, no more ports are open. <laughs>